Today I'm reviewing Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. Hi guys, welcome to All Booked Up. My name is Adrian, welcome to the channel. Um, today we are going to be doing a quick review of Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. Um, as you probably know, Daniel Green is a very well-known booktuber. He is probably one of the biggest. I want to be really clear here that I do like Daniel Green's video content. He is one of the people I first watched when I got into booktube. Um, I'm hoping, I'm trying to make sure that that doesn't influence my review here, but you can take what you want from that, okay? Um, he is definitely someone who I look up to, who I value their reviews. Um, I don't think that's affecting my opinion on this book, so I just wanted to throw that out there um, so you know where I'm coming from um, on this author and on this book. Breach of Peace is a novella, the first of um, a trilogy of novellas that Daniel Green is writing in his world. This world is very dark um, and grey. It is dystopian in many ways. Um, it is sort of a fantasy dystopian um, setting. It is post-industrial. There's definitely more... Um, Steampunk's probably not the right word, but it's sort of a technological step above flintlock fantasy, let's say. In this world, the government is literally a god. So the the god is running this government and running this world. Um, so if you are rebelling against the government, you're not only rebelling against the people in charge, but you are rebelling against a literal god. Um, the idea of these novellas, and particularly this novella, is to give us an insight into this world. It very much feels like table setting and world building for this future series that Green will be writing. So I have some positives and also some negatives about Breach of Peace that I wanna discuss before I give you my final conclusion. I think it's important to note that this is a novella. It is not gonna um, serve as a full length novel. We're not gonna be able to get everything we would want out of a full length novel. I do sometimes struggle with novellas. Um, they do have their issues for me just in that lack of time we can actually spend with the characters. That lack of time we spend developing with them and seeing them develop, um, it gives us a lot less time to really um, build a nice intricate plot as well. So there are um, going to be some novella based issues here that I think a lot of novellas struggle with. Not all. Some manage to do a really good job at keeping it um, functioning and working even in a, a short condensed um, book. But there will be some issues that are here that are going to be hard to know whether it's because um, Green is a novice author, this is his first work, or whether it's actually a limitation of the format that he's writing in. So quick synopsis of Breach of Peace is that we are following um, nominally three main characters, but really it's majority one main character um, who is part of the police force in this world. Now, this police force is literally ordained by the government and literally ordained by God. So these are sort of God cops, if you will. Um, I have seen some controversy about um, people discussing what this implies on um, Green's opinions on policing. And to be honest, I have no issues with the way this is written. I think, um, no offence to my American viewers, but I feel like there is definitely an American-centric issue with how the glorification of police is. Um, I actually don't think it's really that much of a problem here. I think it is clear that these cops are not good people necessarily. Um, just because he doesn't overtly say this is bad in the text, I think we can clearly infer that these are not necessarily great people and that's fine. Just because you write bad people as your perspective characters that is not a problem. Like no one thinks that Joe Abercrombie is glorifying torturers necessarily. He's not saying that's okay. It's just an interesting character to write from their viewpoint. And I think this is exactly the same as that. I have no issues with it, um, to be honest. The first scene in this book is particularly gory and violent. Um, I think there are definite horror influences here. Um, it is almost a, a buddy cop story with horror elements involved and then set in this dark fantasy world. Um, I quite like that setting. I think it's a really interesting um, culmination of those different genres and I think that's really actually one of its main strengths. The first positive I'm going to talk about is the fact that I think this is a super interesting world. It is dark, it is horrible, it's horrific. If you don't like gore or if you don't want to read those really detailed descriptions of pretty grim crimes, this might not be for you. 
But I think the world that Green has built here is actually very interesting. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot of room to explore that in the two follow-up novellas and possibly into these full-length novels if he does get that far. Another positive is the atmosphere and tone of this story. I think going along with the interesting world is the fact that um, Green does a really good job of making everything very visceral. So his descriptions are pretty gory, but I actually really felt poured into the story he was telling. I felt um, things, it wasn't just described visually, but there were smells and feels and sounds that really um, enhanced the experience. It really made me feel poured in. It made me feel um, nervous and anxious for our characters when they felt nervous and anxious. Um, and then when we get hit with a horror element, it really amps up that tension. And I think that is something that is done very, very well by Daniel Green in this um, first novella of his. My last positive I'm going to say is that I think the prose here was surprisingly competent. So for a debut author, I think there was nothing um, in this prose that was clunky. It didn't feel awkward or difficult. I don't think it was sort of super high literary prose. I don't think it was, it certainly wasn't overly flowery. It felt relatively plain, but not um, clunky, not repetitive. I think it was a generally a good solid um, set of prose for a debut novel. Even if it wasn't um, outstanding, it was surprisingly good, I think. And I would be very happy to read books in this style of prose um, without any issues whatsoever. That takes us on to some of my negatives about this book. So my first negative is that I think the character work is fairly minimal. I don't think there's loads of it. I don't think it's done amazingly well. Um, some of the bits of sort of character that we get dropped in are a little bit on the nose um, when we sort of focusing on the relationships between multiple characters. Um, now some of that may be down to the format. I know in a novella we don't have loads of time um, to really dig into characters and their development, particularly if it's a novella that you want to have a driving plot, which I think this does. Um, this is not a purely character-based novella. It has also got a plot that is trying to move us forward and keep going. Um, so I think there we had limited time with these characters. I would have appreciated more time with them. I would have appreciated more time to establish them and who they are. Um, I would have appreciated um, when we do get it for it to be a little bit less on the nose and a little bit more subtle. But that again hopefully would come with a little bit more time if we had more um, pages and more words to really get to know these characters. As I was saying, this book does have a plot that is trying to push us through. Um, quite a lot happens in a short page time, but what I will say is that that plot certainly didn't feel massively new. It didn't feel very complex. It felt quite simple. It was good. It served its purpose. It functioned well enough, but it wasn't um, outstanding as a plot on its own. What it did do well with that, however, is that it did set us up for following works in this world. So for that aspect, I think is a positive. I think that the plot served its purpose in helping us discover more of this world and getting to know a little bit about what's going on in the world. But it certainly wasn't groundbreaking or astounding in its own right. I think it was just solid. So there you go. There are some of my pros and cons to this, um, this novella. Um, I think Overall, to conclude, I'd say this is a pretty solid first entry for a new author. I think there are certainly lots of positives. Um, there are some issues. It wasn't amazingly good, but I think that actually, if you want a darker fantasy setting, if you want something a, um, a little bit more industrial, and if you're fine and happy with some good horror elements in your story, um, this could be for you. If you don't want those horror elements, if you don't want those gory descriptions, then yeah, this might not be for you, unfortunately. I think the real um, thing that gripped me was the tone and the atmosphere that Green manages to build here. I think he does a good job with his prose in those sections where he's sort of building tension and suspense. Um, I think he does that very well. And I think that is something that we can look forward to more in his future works, hopefully. Overall, it was pretty engrossing for me. I blitzed this um, novella in one sitting. So that tells you that actually I was pretty engaged with it. 
And overall, this does sneak into a four star read for me. It's, it's balancing between that three and four. I think because the atmosphere and the tone is so good, it sneaks just up to a four star. Um, but it does have lots of limitations that you would expect from a novella. I hope that helps you um, make a decision as to whether this is something you want to read or not. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button. Feel free to subscribe. Um, I post videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you.